background was uh, it was 12 years in technology, cloud computing, part of a startup that we took public, and uh, we were part of the, the freewheeling wild west of the internet and seeing what that does for innovation and, and uh, value creation here in America and jobs. I'm one that believes in unconstrained innovation, speed of light commerce, and I'm just hoping that uh, the only constraints that we'll see in this incredible story what's going on with the internet is technology constraints but not regulatory constraints. And so I, it just gives me pause. And, and I heard, you know, I have great respect for my friends uh, across the aisle here about, and, and some of the proof points they've demonstrated in terms of the capital markets didn't move with these announcements. Uh, CEOs are saying things are gonna be okay in some of these companies. I'm more concerned about where this all goes long term. I, I've, I, there have been a lot of hearings in Washington where I go back in the history of the records where what began as perhaps well-intentioned, well-intended and good idea turned into overreach. Uh, I have not seen many federal agencies and regulations ever diminish. They tend to only grow. And so I'm looking here for kids and grandkids here where this all heads because I think we've got something very, very special here in America, which is this free and open Internet. So with, with, with that as background, I do want to um, shift gears and talk about the transparency and accountability of the uh, FCC. I'm concerned about the Commission's routine practice of granting broadband editorial privileges to staff beyond just the technical and conforming edits. Um, Commissioner O'Reilly, you, uh, you, you, in your testimony, you discussed the problems associated with these broad staff editorial privileges. Uh, could you describe some specific examples of what needs to be addressed to ensure a transparent and open process? Sure. So uh, I've had difficulty uh, in the last meeting. We talked, the chairman asked for right, uh, the bureau asked for right for editorial privileges, and I objected. And part of the reason is because I had an opportunity to look at our manual, and they're actually not contained within, there are no fast and rules on what we have. They're just practices that we've written down in this consumer's, you know, commissioner's guide to what the agenda meeting should be. So what I've suggested is, one, we ought to codify our, our practices here rather than just have them as free fl floating. But two, I've had a problem with the practice itself because what's been encompassed within editorial privilege has not been just um, technical informing. It's also been changes to the, tech, to the text itself and, and substantial changes. In fact, early on in my time, the, the changes were quite... Um, I want to be careful in my word, but they were quite negative to one of my colleagues in terms of what was being, you know, what the, the changes were being suggested. I'm like, it's unnecessary to um, criticize another one of my colleagues when it's something that I had voted for. Um, it, it's unnecessary to do that in the text. So, so along that line, um, were there staff editorial edits made to the Open Internet Order after the Commission voted on February 26th? Yes. Um, were you allowed to discuss those changes made to the order? Well, I think that, uh, I think I could can suggest there have been changes since the item we voted on um, and to the item that was released. One of them was that they, you know, effectively had to backtrack on the chairman's uh, speech regarding the, uh, I pull out the specifics here, uh, regarding uh, the peering issue. He, he had argued that it was going to be done separately and not part of this item, and, and the interconnection issue was going to be separate. And here they actually put a footnote in and said, no, no, it's actually contained in here. And they had to actually back out his own statement in, in, in I, the since correction. I, since you mentioned it, just to, just to be oh, clear sure. on that, Mike, that, that, that this, what you're quoting, was a speech that I made over a year ago in which I said, you know, I'm not so sure that that is. I have been saying throughout this process, you know, as we led up to it, that interconnection needed to be on the table. This was not an editorial decision that was made in secret. This was a policy decision that was put forth to everybody. Right. Well, let, let, me, let me bring it back here. But, but, but can I also say, yeah. I, I, I would like to identify myself with Commissioner O'Reilly and um, the points that he made in his blog. I think he made some really valid points. And, um, and, and I think that we have to, to, to deal with us. I mean, he and I both walked in essentially the same time, and at the same time. Same day. And we're handed that, well, I was a couple of minutes before. Well, well let me ask you, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Wheeler, Chairman Wheeler, excuse me, um, then why did you choose not to have the entire commission revote on the revised internet order on March 12th, especially if the FCC staff made substantive editorial change. So, so what the, the changes that got made were changes that were in response to uh, dissents, which we are required by law. And, and I guess just in the spirit of transparency, yeah. could you just make that February 26th order available to us? Sure, it's on okay. the website. Okay. Uh, the, but, but let me 26th, be listen. Not, there's 26th, February 26th. It's on the website, yes. No, it's, uh, no, the final one is. He's saying the, the one that we voted on the day of. Right. They, they, they was finally voted on there on February 26th. Yeah, the, one, the, the, the final order is on the website. 
the the um, and that's the that's the public document. The issue here is is that we're. I, I don't believe it is. Just we maybe we'll follow up on that, but maybe we could get to the bottom of that because I think it's the issue right now of transparency and accountability. We've got even within the the commissioners here. Um, Mike, the final order is not on the website. The document as we voted on on February 26 is not on the website. The final right. document. As a re as required right, but the point is by that vote. process and the law. Well, and the question should we change the process and, and law to, to in, so then improve the transparency around the process. So I'd like then to associate myself with Commissioner Clyburn, who okay. was absolutely right when she said that this is an editorial process. And the going back and forth, if we open that process up, there are multiple things that are going to happen. Markets aren't going to understand, well, you know, Commissioner Clyburn wants to change glad to happy. What's that mean? We have, this is a quasi-judicial role that we exercise. We need to be going through and having an ability to, in camera, have our own discussions. But, but 30 seconds more, sir. Okay. I think there's a misunderstanding that the, the name of the, the end of the game is the final rule. Because what happens is you put it out, you publish it in the Federal Register, and the next thing that happens is that people are going to file for reconsideration. And what is reconsideration? Reconsideration is the, the entire decision is out there for everybody to see, and then the public comes in and comments and says, no, we think you ought to reconsider, and we're going to have to vote again. Right. Well, I just, and I'm out of time, but just uh, let me summarize by saying, you know, the stakes are awfully high as we're looking at something mm -hmm. as of, uh, stepping into Title II into the Internet. And I would hope we could work together here to improve the accountability and transparency of that process so that we, one, can ensure we have trust as well as better outcomes. And with that, I'm out of time. Thanks, Thanks Senator Dane. Senator Schatz.